Peace and richest blessings to you. We're entering into day four. Welcome back. As you know, we're dealing with meditation and life's challenges. In the human incarnation, there are challenges that we have on a regular basis. And remember, the challenges allow us to activate gifts within us that allow us to become more, yet never less than our true self. And sometimes the challenges are a reflection of blind spots within us that we actually need to work on to transmute and transcend so that more of us is being revealed. What do I mean by more of us? There is an authentic being that is timeless and dimensionless, shot from eternity. It's pure awareness. It's what you are. And so this movement, these days that we have together, contemplating the truth, contemplating reality, is about becoming more aware that we are awareness itself. And as we become more and more aware, we increase our capacity to choose. Choice is a function of expanded awareness. Reaction is a function of limited awareness. Today, we want to deal with loneliness. Loneliness, oftentimes people want companionship, they want to be around people, to oftentimes cover up a feeling of lack, a feeling of insecurity, imaginary hole within themselves. And during these times where we have social media and we have individuals gaining a sense of self-worth or self-esteem based on likes, based on people flooding themselves to their particular media post. And we're living in, you know, we're living in a society, as I like to say, in which a wisdom, transformational knowledge has been replaced by celebrity. The sense of loneliness is becoming increasingly something to deal with for young people and older people alike. Now, loneliness is, is abated when we are able to mm, like ourselves when we're by ourselves. The idea is if you can't like yourself when you're by yourself, you're gonna be trouble with, when you're with other people. You're gonna use other people to build yourself up. You're gonna stalk people, perhaps. You're gonna become addicted to people being around you all the time to cover up the feeling of inadequacy that's within you. Me, I love being alone. I love people. I'm a, I'm a public person, I'm around people a lot, but I love being alone. Now what happens is, when you start to appreciate who you are while you're alone, you come out of what is called interactive thinking. Interactive thinking are all those thought forms in which you are perhaps beating yourself up, perhaps uh, comparing yourself to other people, uh, perhaps having a level of jealousy or envy about what other people have, things of that particular nature. Those are interactive thoughts. When you begin to fall in love with yourself while you're by yourself, interactive thoughts decrease and inspirational thoughts increase. Thoughts of coherence around the fundamental nature of reality and the fundamental nature of who and what you really are. And so you want to become aware that when you're craving company, you're craving to be with someone, you're craving to be in a crowd, you have to go underneath that and see what's driving that. If you expand your awareness and be still for a moment and look to see what that's all about, you might see that you just don't want to sit by yourself because you have these interactive thoughts about how you're not worthy, interactive thoughts about how you're not enough, interactive thoughts about maybe you're not liked, things of that particular nature. Now remember when we began this, I defined meditation as paying undistractable attention to reality. And I said that reality is with a capital R. It is not your perception of reality, it's that which is real. Now what's real about you? What's real about you is that you're shot from eternity. You're a timeless being without any original sin, any original flaw, that there's something about you that has come to shine and to radiate, something uh, about you that you've come to give and share with the world. That's what's real. And if you sit with yourself long enough and go underneath the interactive thoughts of you're not good enough, the interactive thoughts of comparing yourself to others, the interactive thoughts about what you don't have, you will bump into you You'll bump into your authentic nature that needs nothing from anyone else to bolster yourself up. 
nothing from winning anyone else to cover the imaginary hole, you'll be okay with you. Now, how does that play out in the world? When you are okay with you, when you go into the world of fellowship, when you go into the world of company, you're not trying to get anything from anyone. You're not trying to use someone else to make you feel better. You're walking in the world feeling all right about yourself. You're aware that you have blind spots. You are aware that there's areas that you have to grow. Yes, but you're not seeking to cover that up by company, loud noise, things of that particular nature. In other words, there are two kinds of sleepwalkers. There are those who are sleepwalking and they don't know they're sleepwalking. And so they, they, they become very destructive in the world, uh, narcissistic, a tremendous ego. And then there are individuals that are sleepwalking, but they know they're sleepwalking. You're in this class. You know at some level you're sleepwalking, so you're working upon yourself. You're going into meditation, you're going into contemplation, you're going into introspection, so that you can become aware of the blind spots, but then open yourself up to the depth of your being, expand your awareness, so you can choose a different way of being in the world. So loneliness is something that's really up right now in our world. As I indicated already, with the advent of social media, the advent of people comparing themselves, the advent of people building up their esteem based on how many followers they have and, and such, has really exacerbated that whole sense of, of, of loneliness. The idea, we want to be all right with ourselves while we are by ourselves. So what do you want to do? You don't want to rush out into the world. You want to learn to be still. You want to learn to be quiet. You want to learn to be by yourself for periods of time so that you can notice two things. One, you'll notice the thought forms of inadequacy, the thought forms where you feel separate from your good, the thought forms where you feel not enough. And as you are aware of those thought forms, they begin to uh, speed up based on your awareness. They begin to be transmuted. And then you can begin to discover that there is something about you that's real and authentic, something about you that's all right. And as you sit with your all rightness for a period of time, and this all rightness is not based on, on accomplishment. The sense of all rightness is not based on you getting an award or being rewarded for something. It's not building up that part of you. Your sense of all rightness is coming from your intrinsic nature. Who you are, what you are. Who you are is an emanation of the only life that there is, a distinct, individualized expression of pure awareness. What you are is this life force itself. It's the power of life itself. You, if you sit with yourself long enough, you'll come to that awareness. And then you can have company, you can be good company, you can have companionship. You won't be like individuals who are in a crowd but feeling alone because their inner act of thinking about not enoughness is covering up their perception. Nor will you be the individual who's by themselves feeling lonely and needing company. No, you have the capacity to be by yourself and be all right. And you'll have the capacity to be with others and be all right. That's what you want. It begins with a level of practice, introspection, until you have transpection. You go beyond your perception of other into an awareness of your oneness with life itself. Loneliness will dissolve. Have a rich day. As you remember, there's theory and there's practice. The theory is everything that I just said about loneliness and how to abate it. The practice is actually meditation. Remembering we're using introspective, contemplative meditation for the challenges that we're facing. The challenge today is loneliness. And one of the things I said to you is that you have to like yourself when you're by yourself in order to be with the public. When you like yourself, when you're by yourself, when you're with others, that's called fellowship. That's called communion with high-minded people. It's not just company for company's sake. 
You can even be with other individuals in the silence. You don't even have to talk because you're comfortable with yourself. Let's turn within and begin. Remember, as we've been doing for the last three days, you're settling, your feet are placed on the ground, your back is straight, it's erect, but it's not rigid. You're closing the outer eye. Perhaps you're squeezing your shoulders up to your ears and just letting go. Let's do that two more times. Squeezing your shoulders up to your ear. Breath, squeeze. Ah, let go. This one, you're going to breathe a sigh of relief like you have arrived where you've always wanted to be. Breathe in, squeeze, tighten, release. Ah. This is where we want to be. We're not longing for the good old days in the past. We're not running towards the future. We're right here. We're right now. We're right where our body is. And what is our body doing? The body temple is breathing. In breath, out breath. You're sitting with it. There's no future breath here. There's no past breath here. This breath is presently happening, becoming a, a gateway to the timeless, eternal now. The outer eye is closed, and you're becoming more and more comfortable with being right here, right now. Now let's exercise the use of your imagination for a moment. Just imagine you're sitting in your house, you're by yourself. And notice the thought forms that start to emerge. Your thought forms you normally have. Are those thought forms, thought forms of, I want company, I like to be around some people. Uh, I don't feel comfortable being here by myself. I'm lonely. Without judgment or censorship, you just, just notice what arises when you're by yourself. And if, in fact, there are thoughts that begin to emerge of, oh, I wish somebody would come over and visit me. I need to call somebody on the phone. I need to go out. Give yourself permission to notice what's underneath that. Is it a, a questing for companionship because you don't want to be by yourself? Is it not feeling good about yourself in some area of your life? Is it using someone else to keep you from feeling the emotional hole that's absolutely imaginary within yourself, the sense of not enoughness. This is just an awareness exercise. No judgment, no shame, no blame. You're just noticing the thoughts that are underneath that. Now, as you're noticing these thoughts, heretofore, you may have wanted to act upon them, call someone on the phone, run out and be with somebody in order to alleviate these thoughts. But now that you are becoming more aware of them, you're giving yourself permission to just sit and be aware of those thought forms. They are not the truth of you. They have emerged from experience in time, but they have not emerged from the eternal, from the timeless. They are temporary. And you are waking up and becoming aware that those are thought forms swimming in your consciousness but they're not you. So this first moment, 
just aware of what comes up when you see yourself in a room by yourself. What do you say to yourself? Not enough. I wish I had more friends. I need to call somebody. Just awareness. Just watch. Now, be aware that those thought forms are in your awareness. They are not you. They're floating in the sea of your awareness. You are awareness. You are choosing to be aware of those thoughts and you're choosing to no longer identify with those thoughts as your identity. They are temporary thought forms. Stage one. Be aware of the thought forms when you are alone. Now, stage two. Give yourself permission to bring into your awareness a moment in your life where you felt good about yourself. You may have been in the bath of the forest, looking at the beach, looking into the eyes of someone that could see you, perhaps caught up in a reverie of poetry or just a moment of coherence. Just become aware of a moment where you felt all right about yourself. The genesis of this moment of you feeling all right about yourself, it may have come from something good that happened, something you perceived as good. But right now, I just want you to be aware of how you feel about yourself. The feeling of, hmm, I'm all right. The feeling of, hmm, there's nothing really wrong with me. The feeling of, there's so much life here. Now allow the seeming external impetus of that feeling to dissolve, but stay with the feeling. It's a feeling tone of, I'm all right. I'm all right. There's something good about me, I'm all right. Come with me right into that feeling tone right now. And begin to notice in this awareness, you don't need an external stimulus to feel good about you. This feeling tone is an extension of your real nature. It's an extension of who you are. You're giving yourself permission to stabilize this awareness. What I want you to do at this moment is to place your attention on the feeling tone of, you're all right. Say inside of your own awareness, I'm, I'm all right with me. I'm all right with me. There's something about me that's all right. Just sit with that for a few seconds. As you like yourself when you're by yourself, you'll like yourself when you're with others. But you will not depend upon others to make you feel good about you. You're becoming empowered. You're becoming the authority over your own awareness. You're becoming free, liberated. The thought forms of lack, not enoughness, that may have been exacerbated by comparison, social media, 
celebrity being important, they're now fading. You're placing your attention on the truth that you're all right. Now I want you to take a, take a deep inhalation. Release. Another deep inhalation. Release. Another deep inhalation. Suspended at the apex. Do not let the air out, but catch the feeling tone that you're all right by yourself. Now release. We're allowing our nervous system to catch up with our inner declaration. As you sustain that breath, your nervous system is catching the thought form that you're all right whether you're by yourself or whether you're with others. The sense of loneliness is dissolving into all one, alone, all one. I'm one with life. I'm one with my real essence. This is a practice until you can be by yourself and you can be with others. Stay with it just another moment, just another moment with me right here. So here's a reminder of the practice. You sit, you imagine you're in a room by yourself. You notice the thought forms that are emerging, thought forms of perhaps of loneliness, not enoughness, needing someone to fill in the imaginary hole of some original flaw, you have awareness without judgment, your awareness itself starts to disintegrate those thought forms, and then you become aware of a moment in which you felt all right about you. That moment may have had its genesis in an external something, but you go to the feeling of it, regardless of where it came from. And here we sit with this, I'm all right. With every breath it expands. We become integrated with it. We walk with it. Until ultimately we can be by ourselves and like ourselves. We can be with others and like ourselves. We don't have to have likes to like ourselves. We don't have to have other people's approval to like ourselves. We're back at the beginning. Pure awareness. We're all right. Slowly open your eyes. Feel that you're all right. As you walk into the world, just become aware that you are aware and come back to this practice frequently until you're integrated into the awareness that you're all right. Why? Because you are. Have a bright day.